Hello everyone and welcome to Animation Tutorials by using Blender. In this tutorial we will learn how to animate object rotation in Blender. Over here you can see a rotating cube. The graph over here shows the angle of rotation as a function of time and the function of current frame. There are three cycles of rotation. In each cycle the cube starts from rest it accelerates, then it reaches more or less constant angular velocity, and finally it deaccelerates. Here is the rendered file of this animation. Let's open it. Here it is. Perfect. For clarity and as a proof of principle, in this video tutorial we deal with a relatively simple shape in order to explain the main concepts. You can easily expand this example and make it more realistic. In a more realistic scenario, this can be a robotic joint. Our tutorials are specially designed for students and engineers with mechanics, physics, mechatronics, and robotics backgrounds. The idea is to explain how to create animations of robots, drones, and similar mechatronics devices by using Blender. Also, we will create tutorials explaining how to use Blender for physics simulations and how to couple Blender with Python. In this tutorial, you will learn number one, how to define start and end keyframes that are used for defining animation. Number two, how to rotate an object. Number three, how to change the rotational angular velocity of the object. And number four, how to render the animation and to save the animation as a file such that you can include this file in your YouTube tutorial or in your presentation. But before I start with explanations I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 350 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you have a question or a comment about the material presented in this lecture, please feel free to ask your question in the comment section below. Thanks a lot! Okay, let's start. Click on File, click on New and click on General. Here's our empty Blender workspace. First, I need to make a few adjustments such that you can see the keyboard and mouse buttons that I'm pressing. This will help you to more easily reproduce this example on your computer. I will run a plugin which tracks the buttons being pressed. You don't need to do this step. I'm pressing N to bring this menu and over here is my plugin. I installed this plugin. You probably don't have it. And I will run this plugin. And let's see the magic right now. So you see now what happens over here. If I press the left mouse button, you can see it over here. If I press the middle mouse button, you can see it over here. And if I press the right mouse button, you can see over here. If I press a key on my keyboard, for example, T, here it is. U, here it is. Perfect. Since some of you might not be familiar with Blender, I need to explain a few important things. First of all, you can select objects by using the left mouse click. Then, you can translate or pan slide the view by pressing shift and by holding the middle mouse button. So I'm pressing shift and I'm holding the middle mouse button. And in this way I can translate the view. You can rotate the view by holding the middle mouse button and by moving the mouse. Here it is. I'm holding the middle mouse button and I'm moving the mouse in order to rotate the view. Finally, you can zoom in or zoom out the view by pressing Ctrl and middle mouse button. Here it is. I press Ctrl and the middle mouse button. Or you can simply roll the middle mouse button if you have the mouse with the roller button. Perfect. First, let's make this cube more interesting by changing the material. To change the material, you need to click over here. And you need to click over here. Let's use checker texture. Let's select the color. For example, let's use yellow color. 
and to see the color click over here here it is now let's change the second color by clicking over here and let's select for example blue perfect next let us animate rotation that is let's spin our object here you can see this very important menu. Over here are the frames. Here's the first frame and here's the frame 240. Let's adjust the final frame, that is, let's specify the final frame to be 300. And you can see that this timeline is expanded. First frame and the frame 300. Okay, select the first frame, then select the object by doing the mouse left click, and then press I. Over here, we are inserting the keyframe. Since we will animate rotation, we need to select rotation. However, I will not click it. I will repeat the procedure. So, the procedure is select the first frame that is from here we are starting the animation then select the object and press i and then specify rotation okay perfect next click over here to bring the object properties menu over here we will see the angle of rotation make sure that the object is still selected then set the timeline to the frame 100 and then press R. Over here we can rotate the object. However, we need to fix the rotation axis. To fix the rotation axis, press Z. And over here we fix the rotation axis. I will repeat this. To rotate the object, press R and after that, to fix the rotation axis, press Z. And let's type the rotation angle. I will type 359 as the rotation angle, since the next frame after the frame 100 should start from the beginning, and this means that the frame 100 should, start, should stop at 359 degrees. However, this is not so important. And press Enter. Okay. Next, we need to set the final keyframe. To do that, press I and press Rotation. Okay, let's see what happened. Now, if you move this slider, you can see that our object is rotating. Perfect. If you press the Space key, you will run the animation. And you can see that after the frame 100, everything stops. Then we go to the frame 300, and then we loop again. So far, so good. To stop the rotation, or better to say to stop animation, press over here. Over here, it should be observed that our box starts from rest, then it accelerates, it reaches more or less constant angular velocity and then it deaccelerates and finally it stops. So you can see over here acceleration. For example, from here we have constant velocity. And let's say after this frame it slowly starts to accelerate and over here it stops. Let's visualize this motion by using a graph. Consequently, click over here and click on the graph editor. Here's the graph editor. Again, we were over here, we were in the timeline, and we want to go to the graph editor. Consequently, we need to click over here, and here's the graph editor. Now move this slider and zoom out to see the complete graph. Here it is. We basically start from zero over here. This is the angle zero. And we accelerate. We accelerate, then we reach certain point, and then we stop again. On this axis is the frame, as you can see. 
and on the y-axis is the angle of rotation. Again, we can see that we start from zero, we slowly accelerate, we move with a constant velocity, and then we stop. We can change this graph, that is, we can change the angular velocity, we can introduce acceleration, or we can completely eliminate acceleration. That is, we can make this box to move with constant velocity. To do that, do the right click, and over here you have several options. You have the interpolation mode. For example, we can use a linear interpolation mode. This means that this box will move with linear or constant velocity. Now, since these video tutorials are made for engineering students, the first derivative of this line is the velocity. That is, the slope is the velocity. Since the slope is constant over here, in this case, we will have constant velocity. And let's visualize that. And you can see that the box moves with the constant velocity and then immediately stops. Of course, this is not completely realistic, however, I'm explaining how to change the velocity. Let's bring back the original settings. So click again, right click, then over here, interpolation mode, you can select, select Bezier. Okay, and then we obtain this graph. And of course, you can, you can see what you can do, you can change the velocity, you can manipulate. For example, we can do something like this. Okay, so far so good. The main issue with this animation is that we have a single rotation and then everything stops. However, we have 300 frames. And I want to do the following. I want this box to spin three times. To do that, we need to introduce cycles. That is, we need to introduce loops. First of all, let's expand this timeline click over here, then click on the graph to select it, then click N, N will bring you this menu. Then click on modifiers, and over here click to add the modifiers, and let's click on cycles. And voila, you can see immediately we have several cycles over here. Let's see what happens now. Okay. First cycle, second cycle, third cycle. Perfect. Over here you can adjust the number of cycles. However, let's first stop this animation by pressing space. Let's say that we want to have only, let's say, two cycles or only one cycle. You can do that and you can see the result over here. That is, this is one cycle after the original animation. Okay, perfect. However, we want to have two cycles. This is what we want. Perfect. Okay, the next step is to explain how to generate an animation file. To do that, let's go back to our original timeline and let's expand this menu. First, we need to click over here on Output Properties. And we need to specify the folder in which we will store the animation. So click over here, and in my case, the name of the folder is ctemp. Over here, specify the file name. I will call the file name images, and I will explain later on why the file name is called images. Click on accept. Okay. Now over here, you have freedom to choose the file format. Expand this menu. You can see images and you can see movies. Hmm, so what's the difference? There are two ways to create animation. The first way is to create a series of images and then to glue them together. And we can do that in Blender also. Another approach is to directly render a video. The issue with this second approach, that is, with the issue with directly generating the video, is that during the rendering process something can go wrong. Your computer can shut down. A better strategy is to generate a series of PNG files or JPEG files. However, I will select PNG. And over here, you can choose other parameters. 
However, since this is just an introductory video, I will not play with these parameters. Okay, so that's it. Over here you can also play with some other parameters of your render. However, I'm not going to do that. So click back over here, make sure that the output folder is precisely specified, the PNG format is specified, and over here we can select the frames per second to get a more smoother animation, so I will select 30. To create images, we will click over here, and we will click on Render Animation. And let's see the output. And here it is. Now our render is working, frame 21, 23, 27. We have to wait until 300. Let's see the results. Here are the results. We have a series of PNG files. More precisely, we have 300 files. For every frame, we have a file. This is the starting image, and you can see the frame 1, and this is the end image, frame 300. Okay, the next step is to glue everything together. Go back to Blender. However, first close the render. Go back to Blender. And over here, you need to glue everything together. To glue everything together, you need to find over here a menu by clicking over here and by finding this menu, Video Editing. Again, click on this plus button, Video Editing, then click on Video Editing. Perfect. Over here, you need to click on this option, Sequencer. Okay. Then you need to click on Add, and over here you need to click on Image Sequence. You need to locate your source folder, in my case it's a temporary folder, and then over here to select everything, click on A, and click on Add Image Strip. Here it is. Now zoom out the sequencer and move all the frames over here. Here are all the frames. Now, over here, under this option, we need to change a few things. Let's call the name of the file as final video. And instead of the file format PNG, let's select this option. Then let's choose the proper encoder. Let's choose this option, and over here we can codec, for example, select. Let's choose this option, looseless, and that should be it. Now again, to generate the file, click on over here on render, and click on the render animation. And here it is. Now we are generating the final file, and we will have a single mp3 or mp4 file, that you can later on include in your presentation or upload it online. Okay, that's it. Let's see the result. Here's our final movie file. Let's open it, do the right click, and to open it, I'm using VLC Media Player. Let's play the file. Voila, here it is. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.